Okay, there are two more motor tracks to discuss, and I'm going to talk about them, you know, at the same time. Uh, the first is um, um, uh, called the rubrospinal tract. It originates in what we call the red nucleus, which is a, you know, a nucleus in the brainstem that's actually the site of integration of a lot of information about motor, you know, intention um, that's occurring, that's derived from activity in the frontal lobe, um, and also in the cerebellum. So there's a lot of interaction or you know, meeting of information from both um, structures um, at the level of the, of the brainstem uh, in the red nucleus. And the, the red nucleus is the source of that you know, descending you know, from rostral to caudal end of the spinal cord sort of tract um, called the rubrospinal tract. And you know, like all of the uh, motor tracts that are you know, heading to the spinal cord, you know, they're going to make synaptic connection with motor neurons that are located in the ventral horns you know, of the spinal cord, and then those motor neurons that are located there are going to send their axons out, you know, via the ventral roots of the spinal nerves to make, you know, synaptic connections with your muscles. So the rubrospinal tract interestingly carries um, some voluntary motor output, um, but the level of detail of that information or the, the level of um, sort of motor control that uh, someone's capable of executing, you know, via that particular tract is far less detailed um, than the corticospinal kind of link. So somebody who, for example, has, you know, spinal cord transection or, or damage to the corticospinal tract, they can still sometimes, if it's limited to the uh, corticospinal tract, they can still sometimes make, um, you know, voluntary movements, but they tend to be more of a shuffling and less, you know, uh, uh, kind of fine sort of level of control in the voluntary movements that they retain. So the rubrospinal tract is a voluntary motor tract, uh, but it carries less less detailed information about the kind of motor uh, movements um, to make. The final tract I want to mention is something called the vestibulospinal tract, which originates in the vestibular nuclei in the brainstem, particularly the lateral vestibular nucleus. Um, it integrates vestibular information, which is coming in through a cranial nerve that we'll be discussing soon, cranial nerve number eight, known as the vestibulocochlear nerve, carrying information about um, you know, uh, acceleration and, you know, position, head position. Um, there are some um, what they call semicircular canals that are filled with fluid as part of your inner ear. And these, these canals are arrayed in different planes. There's sort of one going forward, one sort of horizontal, and one kind of, you know, diagonal. And when you move your head in different directions, the fluid moves, and it, it, it actually um, causes specialized sensory receptors in those canals to signal, you know, the direction of movement and the acceleration of movement, etc. And that kind of vestibular information is conveyed along the vestibular portion of the vestibulocochlear nerve back into the brainstem to the lateral vestibular nucleus, which is the source of, um, you know, downward, um, you know, sort of motor, uh, you know, adjustment sort of commands you know, to the ventral horns of the spinal cord, you know, the source of motor output. So it's a, it's a, the vestibulospinal tracts allow you to, you know, maintain balance. They integrate that, you know, incoming vestibular information uh, with motor output. Mm -hmm.